Well, greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. I greet you in that name that is above every other name, at the name of Jesus Christ. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses, because Jesus Christ indeed is Lord. He is above it all, and in Him we live, we move, we have our being in this paradigm, in this place, in this space, in this uh, dimension, this for God's purpose, mind you, not our own, uh, to live as Christ, to die as gain. So to be here is to be about our Father's business. Uh, we didn't come into this reality for ourselves, for those of us that <laughs> um, agreed to come here. We, we came into here because God had a purpose and a reason and wanted us to be here. So, um, you know, I think I was recently I listened to my buddy Zeph and he was talking about, you know, yeah, part of your time here is to, um, is to figure out that reason why you're here. And that is, that is definitely part of, of our process. This is the individual process that each of us goes through while we're here. This is the individual <clears throat> because we're unique and yet we're part of the body. You're unique and yet you are engrafted into the vine. And God has a purpose in your, your time here. Now, knowing what that is, is important. Allowing God to reveal that to you is important. Because once you know who you are and what you're about, things get a lot clearer. Once you know uh, your... See, and the enemy wants to keep you away from that. The enemy requires conformity to their larger system in order to make things work and to know what you'll do and to control you. God leads you by His Spirit and quickens and empowers your giftings, your calling, your uniqueness, and uses that to further His purposes and His kingdom. <laughs> yeah, you guys can hear uh, the glorious Sri Lankan traffic where um, they love their horns here just to... It's, uh, it's just a different way that people drive. Um, anyways, all right. <clears throat> but, um, so yeah, so, so your individual ability to, to seek, to ask, seek, and knock. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. So you got to do that, you know, and that's, that's, but when you do that, when you receive it, now go with it. So when you receive it, now you need to, you need to move forward in what you just received from God. There's a lot of people that God will show you and then the events and the eventualities of life happen and we forget. And that is a strategy of the enemy. Jesus talked a little bit about that with the, with the, um, with the wheat, with the uh, the different seed, the seed sown sown on different soil, you know, some of it was sown where the worries, the riches, and the pleasures of this world choked it and made it unfruitful. And that's something that the enemy will definitely try to throw your way to make you unfruitful. Is just to clutter up your life with all these other things that you can't move on the things that God showed you. You can't. You're paralyzed to move forward on the reality of who you are in Christ. So if you're getting free, then they got to block you, weigh you down, throw all these other, all manner of things against you to oppress you, to stop you, to discourage you, to keep you from doing and being what it is that God desi designed and destined for you to do and be. Now, listen, all of us are not here for that extensive of a window. I almost even don't even want to call it time anymore because all that has become is being thrown out the window. All of what we consider time is uh, is now very very fluid, uh, very transitory. Uh, you know, I, I sometimes I get up even between days, and sometimes it's it's an entirely different construct than it was uh, the the day when I went to sleep. I mean, I will get up and things will have shifted, things will have changed, things are moving. So, you know, that's, that is a, a, 
a marker of what we're in right now, and it's a good marker. Listen, it, these are these are not bad things, okay? These are not bad things that things are shifting because before this, <clears throat> the enemy had a lock and a machine going. Now a lot of things are fluid and uh, things things are shifting, and so now the enemy is really trying to create a lock because. Um, you know, the last thing the world wants is for souls to get out of here. The last thing that the enemy wants is for, for anything to escape this prison, this trap, this, um, this construct which requires the free will decision to participate, the free will decision to be part and parcel of it. And that that is something that is honored by both the kingdom of God and the enemy, the, the devil, the, the, the prince of the power of the air. Those are, those are things, that is something that both sides says, okay, choose. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. <clears throat> now, once you've made that choice, you go with it. And failure to make a choice is also to get... Well, okay, your default is you're born into slavery. So that's where you're choosing to stay. If God reveals himself unto you, if the Lord Jesus Christ shows himself unto you, and you ignore or you turn away, then that, you know, that is your free will decision. But, you know, that offer is there. But that's really the only way out of this mess. You know, you, you can't get out of this on your own accord. You can't get out of this uh, through your own thinking. You can't get out of this through your own connections. You can't get out of this through your own resources. There's people that have had a whole lot more money throughout history than any of than any of us that have tried to figure out a way to buy their way into the good graces of God, and it doesn't work like that. You know, <clears throat> just like under the old construct of time, everybody had 24 hours. Well, we also have, all of us have the ability to make a decision. All of us have that free will. Even if you're a slave, you still have free will. Evidenced by Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in their um, discussion with Nebuchadnezzar. Where they said, look, there's a lot of things, O king, that, you know, We'll be careful in answering you according to those matters. But in this matter, you know, we're not going to be even be careful in answering you because as for this thing that you've set up, we will not bow. And, you know, even if God doesn't save us out of your hands, you know, we're not going to bow. <clears throat> so you've got to know and move on that decision and that choice. Now, once you do move on that decision and that choice, you live it out. Now, on the kingdom of God side, well, <clears throat> all the power of heaven is has now been brought to bear on your behalf. But you're also in a world where, as Jesus said, the road to destruction is broad and well-traveled. You know, there's many that go by it. The road to life is, the gate, you know, is narrow. And there's, there's fewer that go through that one. So, the likelihood that the majority of those that are around you are not going to walk with the truth is the reality. So, even though on the, as far as the resources of heaven and all eternity that are brought to bear far exceed anything that the world has, when it comes to the numbers of the world and what you're surrounded by, you're surrounded by a lot of people that are, are choosing their own death, their own destruction. Okay? So, just, just keep that in mind um, when you get discouraged, or keep that in mind when the attacks of the enemy come. Because you, you've got to know, and you've got to realize that there's a lot of people that don't want to be free. <clears throat> there's a lot of people that want their slavery. There's a lot of people that do not want the light to come forward and they will cling to the darkness because their deeds are evil. They'll cling to the darkness rather than come into the light because their deeds are evil. John 16. Now this is the verdict. Light came into the world, but men love darkness 
rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Now here's the problem that the worlders are having. Light is coming in and it's tough for them to hide. It's tough for them to hide. You know, as time is going forward, what's happening now is that light is coming in and the darkness is struggling to keep its grip. Because in each place where there was the darkness, now there's things are being exposed, things are being revealed, conversations are coming to light, information is being surfaced, videos and tapes and, and uh, data breaches and all this stuff that's starting to come out and show just exactly what it is and who it is and what's going on. And so now, you know, they're, they're pushing, they're pushing to legalize evil, which, you know, before, one of the things too is that, okay, if you go, <clears throat> if you go down an evil path, if you go down an evil way, well, and then what they would have is on the society level, just to keep people complicit, okay, the laws would be in line with something that's a little bit more moral and decent and makes sense, and in line with the scriptures. But when it comes to the enforcement of that law, well, if you're part and parcel of that system, it doesn't really apply to you. You know, that those laws really don't apply to you. They, they can make sure that 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 goes away when it comes to you if you're a person of rank and position. Time and again, you've seen that. Time and again, you've seen when now, when things are exposed, that there is no follow-up. There is no justice system that works anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. And why is that? Because, well, the world and the world system is, by and large, uh, is, is satanic. And that's why the scriptures also talk about that system being completely and utterly and totally destroyed. Now, as, the, as what they're trying to do now is because things are being exposed, now they're trying to normalize evil, legislate evil. So they can say that good is bad and bad is good. Trying to make that which is repulsive in God's sight acceptable and the norm in man's. But here's the thing. <clears throat> all of you, all of us are born with a conscience. And in the process of being born, that's a God-given thing. And now you can sear your conscience. You can sear your conscience. You can, you can, you can turn away from that. You can destroy it. But you have it. You know, you have a conscience that's God-given and inside of you by God's design. Now, what they're asking for you to do is to sear that conscience so that when you do evil, you don't even, you, you don't even register that it's evil because you're dead. When people do something against their conscience first times, like even when, okay, like when you have a child, when a child that doesn't know much but they do something against their conscience, even in the first stages, they know that something's wrong. They know they did something bad. And they feel guilty. But, if that child learns that and to go an evil way, now, after a while, they have no problem lying. They have no problem stealing. Because they've normalized it. They've normalized the behavior that went against their conscience. Now, while the world is trying to legislate evil and trying to get darkness to be called light and light to be called darkness, the problem, the problem that they have is that there's a higher law at play. There's a higher reality at play. And even if you legislate it, you get your law passed. Yay. Woo! Right? Well, you still face the eternal reality and you still face that which is real. So you can legislate that gravity goes sideways. Legislate it. Go ahead. Push that through. 
work for three years, get that law passed, got it done. Gravity goes sideways. That's the law. Okay, well, you go walk off that building then. Nope. You're going straight down. Because despite all of your legislation, there is a spiritual and there's a natural law and there's a universal law that all have to be accounted for. And this is why when God gives His law, His law is the law of life. His law is the law of truth. His law is the law that, that results in, in, in a way forward, in society actually functioning. His law is a law that functions in a way where you, um, where you don't die. Where your society does not die. Where things don't end up being destroyed. You know, okay, scriptures say that the wages of sin is death in Romans. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Okay, the wages of sin is death. When you sin, something dies. That's just that that is that is a spiritual truth. And anybody listening to this, if you are honest with yourself, you know that to be true. When you sin, something dies. A dream dies, a hope dies, a relationship dies. A, you may die outright die because there's something that you do that results in your death even in your physical death but the wages of sin is death and spiritual death is the ultimate but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus so now what happens when, you, well, when the Holy Spirit is in you He quickens you so that you don't go that way, so that you don't go the path of death, and that you live in the truth, and that you can walk this thing out. Now, when they try to legislate evil, well, the problem that they have is that in the legislation of evil, you still can't get away from the, the absolute truth. And so... They rail against God because now they've said evil is good, but when they go and do it, things die. Now their conscience pricks them if they have anything left. Or there's people that, that will, will have their conscience, they'll, they'll do the thing that the law says is okay, but something inside of them is like, no, nah, that's not right. And now what do they do? And now if somebody speaks and confirms that that's evil, oh no, now they got to put that voice out because that person has now said something and they don't like it. They've pointed out the fact that that law is evil. Now they got to put those voices out. Do you see how Babylon, mother of harlots, in you lies all the blood of the prophets and the saints? You see how that happens with that system. Do you see how that happens with the world? Form of godliness that denies the power thereof. Legislating evil. It's amazing the things that people can justify when the time comes that they have something that they want in themselves. Oh my gosh. The things that people can justify incredible incredible but if you want to be free you go with God if you want to be free you let Jesus Christ and that light expose reveal and remove you let him expose what's in you you let him reveal it you 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 let him show so that the ugly reality of who you are apart from Christ can be seen and known and revealed so that you can be what? Free! You first got to deal with what is in order for you to move forward. If you don't deal with what actually is and you go forward in, in, in a falsehood, you're going to just live in that lie all the way through death. But when you let that that bitter truth of who you are apart from Christ sink in it causes repentance 
There will be tears. There will be a, oh my gosh. What happened with Peter when Peter, when, when Jesus first met Peter and got on the boat with him? What did Peter say? Away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. He got a revelation of who he was and who he was apart from God. Like, please, Lord, away from me. I'm a sinful man. And what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? You know, come follow me. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. All that Peter needed to know, though, was, you know what? You know that I'm a sinful man, but you still want me. Okay. All right, I'm down. I'm, I'm down. And that's the thing. You got to know that God still wants you. He knows. He understands. And He wants you. He wants you to come and follow Him. To go all in with Him. And though you be outnumbered in the, in the, by sheer numbers of the way the world works and all the rest of that, and they try to mess with your resources and mess with you and, and do all manner of evil against you, but God is with you and He's going to lead and guide you and take you through this whole thing in His name. He's the Good Shepherd and He leads and guides His sheep. And you go through this in an incredible adventure. Incredible adventure. Next level stuff. And you live life. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You live life and they don't. They don't live life. Nobody that's in the world lives life. Nobody that's in the world lives free. Nobody that lives in the world lives free. Not a one of them. They're all slaves. They're all slaves. Somewhere in that hierarchy, they're all slaves. And they've got to honor... I don't even... They, they wouldn't know the word what honor actually means. They've got to comply. <clears throat> there you go. They've got to comply with the, with the hierarchy. And with the system. With the rankings. With the way it works. Ah, isn't it good to be free? Isn't it good to be free? Aren't you grateful that God called you out? Aren't you grateful that He that began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion? We make known the truth because that's what God wants us to do. We make known the life because that, what's God, that is what God wants us to do. We bear witness in such a time as this, because that is what God wants us to do. If you... Listen, just don't, don't, don't play the world's game. The world's game is, is to try to also get you to just feel like... It's just a mind game at this point with the worlders. Oh, you're missing out. Oh, you've missed this. Oh, you've missed that. You know, it's a game. That that is that is part and parcel of what the world is. That's what they do. Because why? Because they've been defeated. They were defeated at the cross. In Christ Jesus, they lost. And now, moving forward, they've got to do the propaganda to try to get you to not move in who you are. They've got to do that. Because what other weapons do they have? If you go and you start praying in Jesus' name, those things get destroyed. When they try to throw attacks at you, those things get destroyed. In Jesus' name, you got to, you got to move in that name that's above every other name. To live in Christ. If you're engrafted into the vine, in Him you live and move and have your being. To live in Christ and you move in that spiritual position in that spiritual place hey you've got what you need listen if you need to if if you need a resource god will send you to fish and there'll be money in the fish's mouth he'll he will he, that, that that's another thing that gets really fun okay is see the world needs to try to control everybody because they've got to try to also figure out 
how they're going to keep everything going. And they have no life in themselves, so they've got to constantly manage the prison camp to figure out where they're going to get their next thing from and plan it all out. When you're in Christ, you have access to the very source of all life. All things are new and they grow in Him. And that means that God can provide from anywhere at any time in any way that He chooses. And oftentimes, He loves to do it in the most creative and unexpected ways. Listen, if you need, if you need a billion dollars to do what God wants you to do, you will have a billion dollars to do what God wants you to do. If you need zero to do what God wants you to do, you just need obedience, then that's all you need. Move in that. If you need resources and people, God will bring them to you. Just like God brought Aaron to Moses. And if you need to go at it alone, go at it alone. Whatever you need, you have it in Christ. So don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what you have. That's actually a spiritual principle. The spiritual principle is God doesn't look at what you don't have. He looks at what you have. And what He asks is that whatever you have, you put it in His hands and His care and allow Him in, to lead and guide and direct that resource. That is surrendering unto Him. You put it before Him, you throw it down before Him, and then whatever happens, it gets empowered and quickened by Him. And you move forward in the reality of the spiritual reality of that now being quickened and empowered by Him for His purposes. Whether it's the, the rod in the hand of Moses that becomes the staff of God, whether it's um, the Shudamite woman and her last meal for her and her son, which now ends up feeding her and Elijah and everybody, the, her and her son and Elijah, for the entire famine, whether it's the oil jar, whether it's, you just, you just go down the list. Whatever it is, you put it before God and God will quicken that and do some most amazing things with it. And it could be sometimes the most obscure things. But God will take it when it's given over to Him and do something incredible. Do something next level with it. But you got to give it over to Him. <clears throat> you got to give yourself over to Him <clears throat> completely, 100%. That means you don't leave any secret place in your life that you hold on to. Listen, whatever that thing is... <clears throat> that people hold on to and you know and sometimes it's a process and that God will reveal as you keep going and expose as you keep going whatever it is it's not worth it it's not secret sins they're not worth it hang ups they're not worth it unforgiveness not worth it whatever it is now, you may have to go through a little bit of a process with the Holy Spirit, but if your heart is there and your desire is there and your free will is engaged, go for it because God will help you in that. But you want 100% of who you are given over to God. And from that place of that, then whatever it is that He has given you and put in your hands, you give that over to God too. Your resources, your position, your, your life, your direction, your work, whatever it is, your labors, your talents, put those into the service of the living God. Let him now use those for his purposes. And oh boy, I, you know what? And, and I'll take a small side, side note on this too. This is where the world also sets up a trap in their, the religious counterfeit that's set up right next there, right next to the kingdom of God to try to siphon off through their organizational setup exactly what I just talked about. So you want to give all of yourself over to God and they pull you into their system and keep you wrapped up in dead works and steal your resources to build their institutions. No, that is not what you do. So don't fall for the charisma. Don't fall for the, um, <clears throat> for the trimmings, for the collars, for the robes, for the things on the wall, the degrees on the wall, all that stuff. Don't fall for it. God's the one that has to call. 
And God's the one that, that quickens people. Nobody, you can't take a degree for this. Okay? It is, a, it is the giftings are given as the Spirit wills, not as man determines. You want what man determines, you go to the world. You want what God is doing, you, listen, you are led and guided by the Holy Spirit. For those of you that listen in here, you recognize that there's a way that God does things here. And you recognize that the Spirit of God speaks through for His purposes. Okay, good. So, there is no... There is no... Um, dependent, codependent relationship here. There's an encouraging and a quickening of those of you in the body of Christ that God has determined and led to even listen to this message. Hey, it's just a keep going. Keep going. You do that thing that God has for you to do and you're on the right track. Listen, when you actually truly let go and let God just like be the one to lead you and guide you, it just gets so fun. And it's a bit it's a bit scary too because um, now, you know, it's like, okay, God's got to show up. But He does. God shows up. And he's, He is also looking for those that will take Him at His word. God is also looking for those that are willing to just say, okay, I'm going for it. He wants to see that. Because there's somebody, they'll make a move. You know, that's something that was awesome about Peter. Peter, in all his flaws, he's willing to make a move. God wants you to make a move. Just do what the Spirit shows you to do and just let it be that. And you know, right now, in the time that we're in, so many things have now changed, have shifted, have, have adjusted, have become something else. This is a great, great time to just walk in the Spirit, to live in what God has for you to do. Just, just, and just relax. He's in control. And you are bearing witness to one of the most incredible, I mean, it's an incredible transition. It's absolutely incredible. So, yeah, you know, <clears throat> with all that's taking place and all that's going on <clears throat> don't worry don't worry just pray pray let the spirit of the living God lead you and guide you God knows what he's doing with you and he that began that good work in you is going to carry it on to completion I know sometimes some of this gets a little bit scary but even in that time pray Look to God. And He is going to be the one to lead you and to guide you. And in all of this, trust. Well, God bless you guys. You know, just um, keep on keeping on. I think we'll be coming back with you guys with uh, 20 on 20 pretty soon and um, I mean we've seen how the entire world has been turned upside down as God has quickened his people to pray so 20 on 20 is coming up and um, so prepare yourselves pray trust drop us an email faithmix at gmail.com say hi remember ride the wave keep your eyes on Christ um, keep your eyes on Christ. He's the one. He's going to quicken you, and you'll know what you need to do. And with all of that, God bless you. We love you guys. Drop us an email. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.